Hello and welcome to another Overlord Law video and today we are going to take a closer look at what Blue Roses did during basically the Undead Apocalypse and why they are still in the capital city of Rhea's Ties. But before we are going to do so, let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel, as well as all users of the YouTube Thanks function who made one-time donations. Also please check out my new video on my fantasy channel, it's linked down in the description. Now with all of that said, let's take a closer look at what has happened in between the last episodes with the dwarves and the now ongoing invasion. Because during volume 12, Blue Roses actually met best girl Nea Baraya and definitely not best girl Remedios and they were asked to intervene in the ongoing demonic demi-human invasion in the Holy Kingdom. But Blue Roses revealed to them that they were not yet combat effective. This is because during the demonic incursion in the capital city of Rhea's Ties, back in the second season of volume 6, Blue Roses actually battled a battle mate and ultimately Yaldabaoth killed two of their members. And this is something that still affects Blue Roses even now. They revealed that Gargeran and Tia still had to regain their strength and that even with them at their peak, the Blue Roses stand little chance against Yaldabaoth at all. At this point, Evil Eye revealed that only Momon had a chance to actually beat him, so therefore, the Liberation Army under Remedios were forced to go to the Sorcerer Kingdom and asked to borrow Momon for the duration of the campaign. Also, Evil Eye finally realized that she could just have teleported herself to Momon if she wanted to visit him. Like, I hope this is still going to happen someday. I really want to see the reveal of Momon's true identity to the Vampire Princess. I really would enjoy this Dio moment, but again, that's all in the past. Contemporarily, Blue Roses as far as we know, even in the books, did not engage the Sorcerer Kingdom in an open battle, which would be something that could have ended very, very badly for them. For while Evil Eye is able to barely beat Entomar, if she has allies and a hard counter on her side, and therefore she should be able to deal with a death knight or two if supported by her entire team. And since she was good enough at teleporting, that Demiurge preemptively prevented her from getting away by using Dimension Lock. So even Evil Eye herself couldn't be sure that she could facilitate the escape of the entire group in time. So if they had done battle, Blue Roses were either really really lucky, or the conflicts were really really minor more akin to a skirmish than to fighting even mid tier on dead. Also, since the army of the dead was able to effectively prevent intel from leaking from the border region, and since it was widely known, at least to Blue Roses, that the Sorcerer King planned to attack in a month, it is very likely that Blue Roses hadn't even any idea that the war was actually starting. So we can actually be pretty sure that Blue Roses did not fight the undead hordes of the Sorcerer King directly. And last but not least, Blue Roses was aware of the danger that the Sorcerer King posed, thanks to Evil Eye, who had fought Yaldabaoth, and thanks to the fact that it was now widely known that the Sorcerer King defeated him, something that the anime even mentioned, although it spoiled pretty much the entire movie. So, therefore the Blue Roses would have known that they don't have a chance and during the talk with the Black Scripture, both adventurer teams had been offered an escape route, but it would have been revealed to them only after they would have agreed to join them and relocate to the slain theocracy, something that both Adam and Hyde ranked adventurers refused adamantly. And finally, there was one other thing not only wanted the Blue Roses to make the capital city their last stand, because it was the capital city, but because Lachius wanted to protect Princess Renna, whom she considered to be one of her best friends, someone who just like her genuinely worked for the good of the people and who fought corruption and evil wherever it has shown its face. So that's why they are still, or so that's why Blue Roses was still there, despite knowing about the danger because Lachius wanted to protect a friend. And with this last heartwarming detail covered, I hope you now have a better understanding why Blue Roses over the course of the wider story did relatively little after their little battle with Demiurge, or rather Yaldabaoth, and only now that Gargeran and Tia have recovered enough, they became more active again. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed this little gap filler video. Thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash 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 Bad Guy Yehi Bad Burrito 316 Beezer Ben C Brandon D Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Crystal Prime Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987 Devin Downen Ding Dong Duck Dragon Dystopia Dystopia the Second Enigmatic Unicorn Feral Shivan Guy with Dead Head Hector Marino Hoss Huster Jacob G Jana B Jason J. Morris Chromius Kyle R Legendarius Lelouch Ribetania with a mustache Lexus Fox Lord Nishikian Rai Lord Touch Me Merovec Mr. Shoes Mr. Tweaker Michael R Michael Y Nope Oh hell no Normal Toad Oh Kill Overlord General Gasper Paddy Pantom Personage Primus 11, Cune Caracos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rocket Smasher, T.E. Wang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm and Zonagon. Thanks guys. Anyway, have a nice day and I hope to see you all again soon on my next video.